I'm going to be showing you an introduction to what's called simple harmonic motion, or SHM for short. So anytime you see SHM, we mean simple harmonic motion. We're going to do some definitions and a few examples. Now a lot of students don't find that simple harmonic motion is actually that simple. So I think that's the first thing is, uh, is let's, let's maybe try to define it and then we'll see if it makes any sense. So if we have SHM, so simple harmonic motion, we have two conditions happening. We have that the acceleration, and I'm going to spend lots of time, I think, explaining these different things and showing you exactly what we mean here. But basically we have that the acceleration is proportional so this is what we're going to mean here by simple harmonic motion. I'll just start with a definition. So the acceleration is proportional to the displacement. Actually, just bear with me. I'll just write down these two and then we'll talk about them. Uh, then we have that the acceleration, um, we're going to say is in opposite direction. To the displacement. It's supposed to be an R here, direction to displacement. So we've got two different things here. So we're going to say then that the, we can say that acceleration is pro, uh, proportional to D, I suppose we could say, or some sort of thing. Actually, we'll call it X. So we'll say the acceleration is proportional to X, your displacement. And here we'll say it's proportional to the negative. So that's really what it means here. Maybe I'll actually take those out. We're going to look at those in more detail later. So what we really mean here is that we have a situation where these two things right here are happening. So we have acceleration. Now, do you remember about acceleration? Acceleration happens. Um, that's A. A equals acceleration. That's going to be measured in meters per second squared, so ms to the minus 2. And we're going to have displacement. In this case, actually, instead of calling it, normally displacement is given by an s. In this case here, we're often going to call it x. So x is going to be your displacement. And we're going to call that, well, that's in meters. So we're going to have these things here. Now, remember that F equals MA. Some people call this uh, one version of Newton's second law. Basically, it tells you that a force, if you have some sort of mass, there's also acceleration. So force and acceleration are related. So if you have a force, you have acceleration. But we mean an unbalanced force, by the way, because forces can be balanced. So here I mean a net force. That means if you add up all the different vectors that mean your force, if they don't all add up to zero, so let's say they add up to something to the right, then you can accelerate to the right. And how much? Well, whatever that result is, multiply that. Uh, well, in this case, you can calculate it. So take that result, divide it by m, and you'll get the acceleration. Or if you know the acceleration, multiply that by m, you get the force. You can work backwards, forwards, however you want. So just showing you that acceleration is related to a force. Now, this may not make any sense. So let's actually talk about uh, what's going on here with an example. So just remember, though, SHM is always going to be that the acceleration is proportional to the displacement. What that means is the more you displace it, the more it accelerates because the more force it feels. And it's going to be that the acceleration is opposite in direction to the displacement. So wherever you stretch it or move it, it wants to go the opposite direction. That's where the key things here. So let's look at this maybe with an example. Let's have a mass on a spring. So let's say I have, uh, yeah, just that, I'll say some sort of boring box here. And my world's most boring box, it's going to have springs attached to it. So maybe it's got a spring here, boing, 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 something like that, another one here. And maybe it's attached to a wall here, and so then it's sort of stuck like this. So basically, it's free to sort of go left and right. Now what we often say is this point right here, this middle point, we're going to call that the equilibrium. Because if you leave it be long enough, it'll eventually end up here. Now what you can do, of course, you can stretch it out. So I just want to show you that, that maybe over here at max displacement, over here, at your max displacement, I'm going to say like that. So maximum displacement happens over here, but it also, maybe I'll draw it in a different color. So max displacement happens here and maybe over here, which means you can take your, your mass here and stretch it over here. But imagine you stretched it over here. 
I mean, over here, it feels the force. This is the important thing. If you stretch it over here, it feels the force, and therefore the acceleration. Remember, because force and acceleration are related, right? So if you feel a force, that means you have an acceleration. It feels the force um, proportional to the displacement. So in other words, if you take this thing and you stretch it, so you stretch it out to the left, then it feels a force that's, you know, the more you stretch it, the more force it feels. And it's opposite in direction. That's the other key thing here. So that means that as you stretch this thing to the left, for example, the force it feels is to the right. And that's because uh, this spring over here is being stretched and it wants to make it go to the right. And this one's being squished, which means it acts opposite. So basically, anytime you have simple harmonic motion, it's when you have these two things here, that the force that's felt is proportional to this displacement. So the more you move it from its equilibrium here, the more you displace it, the more force it feels, and therefore acceleration. And it always wants to go opposite to how you stretch it or move it. So if you move it over here, it wants to go to the right. But if you move it over here, it wants to go to the left. It's like someone who can't decide what they want. They should always want the opposites. Uh, one of my friends uh, in university, he actually said, it's like a girl, right? That, you know, anytime uh, you ask them to do one thing, they do the opposite. That's a bit sexist and quite simplistic, of course, but uh, there you go. So this right here basically moves opposite in direction. I'm sure a lot of women could actually say the same thing goes for men. Uh, so let's not really generalize here. But in this case right here, these things are not like men or women. These are their own systems. Simple harmonic motion. You stretch it, it moves opposite direction. And the more you stretch it, the more force and acceleration it feels. That's a mass on a spring. We can also have a similar situation with a pendulum. So a pendulum, let's say we have some sort of string, and then we have a mass at the end of it. So that's some sort of mass here. Now this thing, of course, we could move it over here, maybe. Or we can move it, you know, over here. And if we let it be, it'll actually sort of, it'll oscillate back and forth, won't it? You know, if you stretch it over here, it'll sort of go back and forth. Well, right here, that's the equilibrium. If you let it be long enough, it'll actually sit there. But over here, this right here is at its max displacement. And same thing happens here with this motion. That the more you stretch it over, well, if you stretch it to the right, the force it's going to feel is more the more you move it to the right. So the further away to the right you move it, the more force it feels. So that's the first definition because its acceleration is proportional to displacement. So the more you displace it, the more it feels a force and therefore acceleration. And it also feels it in the opposite direction. That's the next definition. That means that if you stretch it over here and you let it go, which way does it go? It wants to go left. But if you stretched it to the left, which way does it want to go? To the right. See, it's always going opposite to how you move it. So that's why a pendulum is another really good example of simple harmonic motion. And in fact, uh, what you can do, I've got a little uh, animation here. This is another PHET animation with a pendulum. So we can actually see what happens here. So I can take this pendulum of this length and this mass, and I can sort of stretch it out to, I don't know, maybe let's say 30 degrees and let it go. It's going to oscillate back and forth. In a, this is a not realistic situation because we're assuming there's no friction. In other words, there's no damping. What this means is that the oscillations always go to the left by 30 degrees, to the right by 30 degrees, and left and right. How very relaxing. Now what we could, of course, do is try to measure how long does it take for this pe pendulum to actually do one whole period. In other words, how long does it take for it to go back and forth? I can do that with a little photo gate timer. I think I can add one here. There we go. And I can take that thing then and say start. What it'll do is it'll measure the time it takes to go from one end to the other. In this case, let's say 2.8 seconds. That's because it was 2 meters long. What if I take that then and make it a lot shorter? What if I make it only, let's say, this much? And I'll do reset here. I'll still pull it out to 30 degrees. And I'll let it go. So this time, let's see how long it takes. Before it was 2.8 seconds. What is it this time? Now it's 2.14. So changing the length of this pendulum does something to the time it takes to go back and forth. By the way, um, changing the mass doesn't do anything. 
Now, what's kind of fun about this one is you can actually do that with, um, you can actually see what happens if you're on different places. So, for example, what if you're on the moon? Well, the moon has a lot less gravity. So because of that, there's less force. Therefore, it actually takes a lot less time. Or, sorry, a lot more time to go back and forth. So it's like a slow motion version of the pendulum. That's kind of cool. And if you're on Jupiter, for example, with way more gravity, of course, then it goes quite fast. I think that's pretty fun. What if you're on planet X? Basically, what they allow you to do here is they don't tell you how much the force of gravity is, but you could figure it out. And they even say, what if you're on planet with uh, G equals zero? So no gravity. What would happen when you let it go? Nothing. Because there's no forces on it. It would just stay there. So if you're in outer space, for example, with the pendulum, this is what would happen. Pretty boring. So that's why, I mean, I think it's pretty cool with pendulums. You can actually do lots of different things. And in fact, remember when I implied that changing the length changes the period? You could go one step further with a pendulum. There actually exists an equation. It goes t equals 2 pi, I hope I remember it correctly, square root of L over G, where t is the period. So that's the period of oscillation, how much it takes, how much time it takes to go back and forth. L is the length of the pendulum. So that's in meters. And g is the acceleration due to gravity. So in this case right here, let's say acceleration due to gravity. So for example, on Earth, we expect to have this magic number of 9.81 meters per second squared, approximately. And what's kind of cool then is if you did that experiment, if you did a, an experiment by changing the length of a whole bunch of different pendulums and you measured the time it takes for them to complete their oscillations, just with that and doing a graph, you could actually calculate the acceleration due to gravity. I mean, pendulums are kind of cool, right? Because like I said, the more you displace it, the more force there is. So that means the more acceleration. And also, uh, it's always opposite in direction. So that's why it's simple harmonic motion. I mean, lots of things can be a pendulum. This could be you hung by your feet, for example, oscillating back and forth. I even saw a while ago a pendulum cat. This is a, uh, a little video of someone actually holding up their cat. Keep in mind, I don't think they're hurting the cat. The cat doesn't seem too in pain here. But they're basically, this cat could be a pendulum, which means if you had a whole bunch of different cats of different lengths, just by seeing this right here, you could, in theory, I suppose, calculate the acceleration due to gravity. That's assuming, though, that the cats aren't really resisting you, because there would be other effects there. But still, pretty neat. And you can go even a step further. You can do something like with a guitar string. These are just a few examples. So let's say you had a, gu uh, a guitar string. So here it is. Normally, it would be sort of a straight line. What would you do with your string? Well, maybe you sort of, maybe your string is sort of up this way. So you sort of pluck it this way. Well, if you lift it up and let it go, of course, well, it'll sort of oscillate. It'll go sort of... You know, it'll go sort of up and down and up and down and up and down. But what happens then is over here, this is your equilibrium right here. And up here, that right there is your max displacement. That's as much as it can move. And this guitar string will also undergo SHM, simple harmonic motion. Why is that? Well, the more you pluck it, the more it accelerates. So that's the first thing here. So that means more acceleration means more displacement. Sorry, the other way around. More displacement means more acceleration because it's more force. And again, the acceleration must be opposite in direction to the displacement. And look, if you displace it this way, which way does it want to go? Down. But if you displace it this way, what if you pluck it downwards? Which way does it want to go? Up. So that's why this also undergoes simple harmonic motion. So guitar, guitar strings, pendulums, uh, masses on springs, lots of other examples. But uh, these are the, I think, you know, that's just to give you an idea of what kind of things can follow SHM, or simple harmonic motion. We're going to go into more detail in the following videos, doing some equations and actually really working with these in more detail.